Right, what have I got it here? Boosh, it's yet another headlamp. This channel just seems to be obsessed with headlamps, but it's yet another one. And it's from Ace Beam this time. So just so you know, Ace Beam sent me this for free. They said, Trail Trek, we've seen your reviews. We we'll like what you do. Have a look at this. This is right up your street. And they were right. It is right up my street. So, you know, I was really, really happy to look at this. At first, I was a bit sort of apprehensive. I thought, hang on, smooth reflector on a small headlamp. I like a TIR. I keep banging on about TIRs, but I thought, no, I'll test it. And I'm glad I did. So let's look at some of the specs, and then I will bring it out and show you how I got on. So straight off, five-year warranty. So that, that fills me with a bit of sort of... Um, relief there that this isn't going to fall a bit. In regards to Beam and my dealings with them, I bought, uh, they did send me a couple of flies. This isn't a bit of advertising here, this is just to illustrate a point of truth here. Um, I bought with my own money the E70 and loved it. I just loved that design, look at the aesthetics on that. I love carrying that and I, I like the, the, the way that the clip works and everything. IPX8 and 4600 lumens and all that good stuff and then just loads of juice and I'm mad for having ones with huge cells. I don't mind the weight, I'm a big sort of strong guy, it doesn't bother me. So I love that light, I bought that. So, you know, when I, when I think of Ace Beam, I think of m more costly but really nice. And really in regards to this, this isn't that costly because I've compared it with a, with a few other lights. I was comparing it with the H1 from Woburn and when I looked at the price, this is it shot up. I mean, yeah, there's loads of utility and things you can do, which I'll show you later on. And I love the TIR, TIR, TIR setup on this one. It's similar to the D1. But price-wise, it's like 70. You can get this for like 40 bucks. I just think the prices are, are very strange at the minute. So luckily this isn't too high. So they are claiming this is a multifunction running headlamp, although on their website, when you have a look, it starts going on about fishing and things like that i think for fishing i would probably use something a bit bigger with an 18650 cell but this is a lightweight cell so i think that's where they're coming from and when the angle is they're saying look it's a headlamp but for running because you want something light so it doesn't jiggle about but in regards to that they are it's 71 grams which i think is pretty pretty impressive you know all in and magnetic tail on the bottom compatible with a single battery one a standard battery it also runs on a 14500 I'll, I'll cover that because that's a different battery technology in regards to chemistry so a lot more power more output so you can fall back to an aa but you drop the output um, and that's enough of the box there so a, a bit boring there saying look at all these things you can do right wonderful okay so on with the review and like i say they sent me this but this will be an honest review they didn't tell me what to put in this they don't get a look at this and i will not edit it this is exactly what i think only the truth so boosh get rid of that box i've obviously been out and tested it. i've got a thoughts video up there's the thoughts video that i've got up if you want to go and watch that first um, it's it's a walk and talk basically which i like to do because i am genuinely out at night alone in the wilderness and i do hikes and things like that right get rid of that boosh Okay, so um, I have done initial thoughts and I've carried this for a number of weeks. I've had it in my pocket and I've used it as a headlamp on multiple occasions. But I'll put this back to show you, show you exactly what you get from the box. So I don't need that. Douche, not interested. You get your silica there just to keep the moisture off. Although this is IPX8, so proper waterproof. You do get a charging cable because this is Type-C charging. You're probably thinking, Type-C charging? Well, where's the port? It's on the cell itself. By doing that, it means that they can keep this completely waterproof. This will go right under sort of meters of water and remain in intact. Okay. Um, one thing I, I will mark them down a bit of a point. Look at the length of that. That's a bit mean. Why is that so short? Are they running out of wire or something? I think that's a little bit mean. I prefer a longer wire. That's starting to take the mick. Um, but they'll only get, they'll only lose maybe a quarter of a point for that. You get the book, which I can't be able to read. I'm doing this in 4K at the maximum bit rate I can get away with. So if you want to pause this and read it, you can. So there's the features, operating instructions, and uh, the little bits and pieces, including warranty there. So if you want to pause that, you can. And that looks like... Simplified Chinese. So for my Chinese viewers, I know there are some. There you go. And there you go. And there you go. So there you go. Perfect. In regards to the run times and stuff, I just want to point out there's two models of this. One is black and one is grey. So the two the two that you can get, which will I'll quickly go over and then I'll show you the differences. 
you have the black version here like this so you, the maximum lumens on this is 650 okay but because it's 650 you are getting a 5000 kelvin neutral tint and it is a high cri in fact it tells you here so it's saying there so 5000 kelvin that's the color that you're getting so we'll put a little thing up here just so you understand the tints so this is towards the neutral so it's not it's not it's not what you would call a warm tint where it's like sort of orangey and, and yellowy it's more towards the neutral 4500 uh, to 5000 sort of kelvin is the neutral in other words daylight on a sunny day on earth when it hits the floor after it's gone through the atmosphere and if the other version is right at the top there 6500 kelvin uh, tint value in other words white light or cool white as they sometimes call it so the difference there is if you get the 6500 kelvin version it's white light the body is gray you don't get to choose that and you lose that high cri value i'll discuss that as we move on though and in regards to the outputs there you can see the differences there so i've got the one there on the right there the high cri neutral white so turbo there you go so turbo goes up to 650 and then there is a step down after 45 seconds there high 230 130 and ultra low five and then you've got an sos if you really really want that uh, and there's your stats so you can drop this it has a 1.5 meter drop rate nice to see uh, very nice some of them are only one meter so brilliant and a proper it says FL, FL1 standard. What they mean is IPX8. You can submerge this in up to two meters of water. It will be fine. Proper waterproof. Right, get rid of that bush. You get a couple of O-rings. I'm not going to go over them because people get bored. But they are replacement for the machine threaded section. Because sometimes if it's not seated correctly and you, you, you open it and close it, you can damage it. Um, so it goes... I'm not going to zoom in or anything here. It just goes between the threaded section and that painted section there. It ensures waterproofing. Uh, the threads are very nice. They're the angular type rather than the sharp type. So nice. They're not over painted. So they're nice and smooth. And they're not too long. So you're not screwing away for five, set, five, five hours getting fiddler's elbow or anything like that. Boosh. Get rid of that. Here is the headlamp. Uh, the container basically for your head. Um, so I've used this. I liked it. It's very lightweight. It reminds me of, uh, there's one over there. The Brynite has the same effect where, can you see you've got this waffle system with the holes in? It limits, it doesn't stop, but it limits sweating because when you're hiking, you are exerting yourself and you will raise your temperature. And in order to lower that, you try and get a bit of evaporation through sweating. So we'll have a close look at this. So very similar setup, although I would say this feels sturdier similar but sturdier and it has the ace beam branding there the ace beam branding and these these chevrons are reflective so if there are any light it will reflect and i think that's a nice feature and on the inside you may or may not see so on the bottom section can you see there is what appears to be a flattened out bead of sort of looks like glue from a glue gun basically but it's still stretchy look what that does is that provides grip because sometimes what happens is if these aren't tight enough they flop all over and they're a nightmare because this is only a two pointer a three pointer would be like something like the night core here this is a three pointer so it, you've got the you've got the band going around the circumference of the head like that and then over the t like like there's your circumference and this goes over the top the reason for that is it's to stop droop if you didn't have that your light would droop forward like that or bounce around if you were trying to run it becomes extremely irritating and the only way to resolve that is is to make this so tight you end up with a pressure headache it's ridiculous you like trying to make popcorn out of your brain or something so i think they've thought this through it's nice the only thing i would um complain about is it's a little difficult sometimes to get in and out of this that's sometimes a good point because you don't want it too loose and i've had brands in the past where it's way too loose it flops around and you or you make the adjustment where if you imagine this is on your head when you want it to go down your feet you make that sort of adjustment and it slips and slips and slips and it becomes annoying and you're constantly resetting it so i'll forgive them to a to a degree but the you know these these they're saying this is silicon and it will go on these sort of runners here in regards to the other attachment options, you do have the clip here, which is quite nice. It's not fully deep carry, but this is so small. Do you really need deep carry? It's it's really, really small. I mean, even compared to something really small like the, the Brynite HL16 here, once that's fully extended, 
I mean, look, big difference. I realize this is using a totally different cell. This is a 13, 16, 340, I think. So fatter, shorter, but it, it, it still holds that. This is a very small lamp. If you, you know, bear in mind, you've got like the H1. I, I like the H1, 400-ish lumens. This is, this is output, is more output on it, but look, they're much slimmer, much slimmer. Same cell, but much slimmer. Same capacity cell as well, actually. So very small, and I think this clip is more than adequate enough. And it's not that strong, but it doesn't need to be because this is an extremely light light. Sorry for the pun there, but it is a light light as in its weight. So let's discuss what's going on here. So what have they put together? So it's a very svelte frame here, very, very small. And it is using a 14500 cell. And I'll show you the cell that they supply. So it just looks like a normal button top cell and it is 920 milliamp hours exactly in line with something like the H1 that uses exactly the same capacity. And as you can see, you can see the magnetic base there, which I'll cover in a moment. So nice cell. Now, in order to charge this, you use the cell itself. So in the section where you would normally find some sort of protection, it is a type C. So let's let's show you that because there's, there's two modes that can work in. There's a, it looks like that's black, it isn't. There's a translucent section there with an LED. And so if we wanted to charge that, and I'll show you using their own cable, so type A to type C. So when you plug this in, it should go red. There you go. So you see how it's red there, so it is charging. It's charging rather slow, five volts at 0 0.1 amp. That's, it's nearly full. It, it's not gonna charge that fast and it's a very small cell. That will change green once it's complete and that's it. It stops charging and automatically cuts off. So yes, type C does work, but the big question is, can you charge with type C to type C? And of course, the only problem with having to charge the cell rather than the body of the light, it means you can't use this whilst it's charging, which for a headlamp, I think is a, again, it's something I could probably knock a point off for that. It's not meant for that, but a lot of outdoors people will want to use it whilst charging. And it also gives you the option of, if you had a port, you could attach that to this in your pocket and charge it whilst you use it, massively extending the run time. So let's have a look. So type C into the top there. There you go, so it is charging. So you can use type C to type C, in other words, power delivery. Very nice, thank you, Ace Beam. That's nice, and as you can see there, we'll get a nice close up there. There you go. So it has a translucent section where you can see some of the circuit board there, and that is your red LED showing that this is charging. But at a, at a very low rate, but it, it's nearly full, and you know, how fast you want a massive, uh, you, you really want millions of amps going through a tiny cell like this? Probably not. Okay, so it says there type C. So nice to see it's not one of these ridiculous you know, micro USB ones. So um, I've had a look down there when I've been checking this. It's all clean and very nice looking, but I would expect at this price point and from a brand like Ace Beams, who I trust. So tail up, boom, pop that in. And just to show you actually, I will use this, a different cell. So if we put in, I'll just get the H1, give me a few seconds, there's the H1, so just to show you, so the H1 uses very similar setup, they also have the type C and the button top, slightly different LED setup though, and then flat on the bottom, same capacity, 920 milliamp hours, so let's try someone else's cell in there, let's see what happens, that's the right base. And it still works there, perfect. So you don't just have to get theirs. It's not proprietary or anything like that, like you get with your lights, who are terrible for that. Uh, okay, so pop that back in there, back in the H1. Jobs are good. Okay, so like I say, it does come with a magnetic base. So that gives you options where you can hang this upside down or under a hood of a car or on things. It just gives you more options. So if you had a metallic surface, bang, there you go. It will attach itself. Another nice utility feature, very strong magnet as well for its size, but it's not got a lot to do because it's very, very lightweight. So nice to see. Okay, so moving on. So let's talk tint and CRI first, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll explain the UI and the outputs. In fact, let, let's bring up a picture here, bring up a picture. Okay, so I did a little bit of testing, as you can see there. So I did a little bit of testing, and I checked the tint. So bear in mind, the model I went for is the black colored one. Now with the black colored one, what you get is you get the high CRI. So the CRI in this was a massive, and, and, I, and I understand my testing could be off, it could be slightly lower than this, but it was certainly looked and felt like this, 98.6. So when I talk about CRI, I'm talking about color rendering index. So 
natural light during the day when you go outside that's a hundred percent you get to see the full color gamut as you get cheaper leds or leds that are only interested in output or more interested in output i should i should say it's not exclusive what you'll get is you'll get a reduction in that so somewhere around the 70 mark sometimes or sometimes down to the 60 depending on the manufacturer and the setup um, it can be it's less pleasant to look at and if you're a photographer you shouldn't, certainly wouldn't want that and outdoors looks worse you're not picking out the nice reds and greens can sometimes look a bit flat so there was none of that with this i was extremely happy with this with the with this cri very very good and in, in regards to the tint bear in mind they claimed 5000 it was close to that it was 4745 in my testing but that all that dependent i did multiple tests over multiple days and depended on the mode and it was certainly around the 5000 mark kelvin so no problems with that and um, if, if you notice there is no risk of pulse width modulation in other words annoying flicker that you would you would see there's none of that which is nice to see i've put the little graph up there so there is something going on there but i couldn't see anything on any of the modes and in any of my filming and i even tried to film it at a thousand frames a second i couldn't see anything so for all intent purposes there's no pulse width modulation even though there, you can see there is there but it's it's imperceptible we'll call it that okay so get rid of that photograph there okay so right what we can do is we can go over the ui and the modes so quite simple now there's no a lock which i was annoyed i was very annoyed that there's no a lock so you think well hang on if there's no a lock who cares right because when it's on what you can do is and i'll turn it on let's see it going through the modes there if you haven't got an e lock what you normally do is you just undo the tail now that doesn't work it doesn't work in this instance. So how do you lock it? Well, you can't. The only way to lock it is to completely remove it like that, which you're not going to do, are you? So what do you do? Well, Acebeam have decided, rather than having four clicks for lock or something like that, like everyone else, they've decided we'll have it. So one click does nothing. So listen, one click does nothing. To turn it on, it's two clicks. I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily agree with... Um, their thought process on this yes it's much harder to turn something on in your pocket by two clicks than one but it, it can happen and i have done it personally and especially for a headlamp which you're going to throw into bags that are over packed and pockets when you're busy outside i think they need to possibly rethink that i would like to see them add an e-lock it's not the end of the world just add an e-lock for five or six clicks i don't know why they don't do that so i'm going to knock a point off for that sorry but that's just what i think but two clicks for on so there, on and then you're in the modes and it, it's got memory mode and then you just click and hold and it goes to them so low medium high low medium high now there are more modes so we'll start at the bottom so to get to ultra low you have to click and hold so from off click and hold right there's your ultra low so they are saying five lumens normally i would have said well i, I prefer like a one lumen or sub lumen mode it doesn't ruin night vision for map reading and things like that and giving away position but you know I'll forgive them on this one because it's such a small light. It's not supposed to be a fully featured headlamp like something like the Nightcore. Um, but again, I still, and I, I will keep repeating this, I prefer like a, at least a one lumen mode. It just gives you something you can leave on in a hotel room or when you're map reading or you don't want to give away position. There's other, there's lots of reasons why you would want that. But anyway, they've chosen to go for five lumens for ultra low and they are making the claim of 58 hours on that, which is brilliant. So you could leave that running as a rally point or a marker or whatever. You then have low, so if we go to the next one, so low, now low is 30 lumens, you will get 16 hours out of a fully charged cell, and then medium is 100 lumens, so 8 hours, and then high is 230 lumens, you'll get 2 hours, I think that's impressive, look at the size of that, it's so small, I can hide it even though I look like ET, you know, with an ET phone horn finger, other than that you wouldn't know that was in my hand, for something that small to give you... 230 lumens which i think you can get most jobs done by and you can go for a walk with that two hours very impressive um, if you want turbo it's not within the normal cycle of the click and hold you have to double press when on so watch there double press and you're able to do it quite rapidly you don't have to slow down or anything 650 lumens now here's the interesting thing if you remember high was 230 lumens you are at 650 here and it will step down after 45 seconds but instead of stepping down to the high which is 230 for whatever reason it steps down to 250 so go figure you know that, that, that's something they've decided so pretty impressed now the one thing i want to discuss is the beam so let's turn it on 
So I'll double press and it's straight back in there. Now, normally, and I hop on about this and I go on and on and on. And I say, right, if it's a headlamp, it should be wide. You can't see it here, but there is a slightly wider section here where you are getting light, especially as you pull back. So watch, you're never going to use the lamp like this, are you? It's going to be on your head or on your chest. So as you come back, see how you've got that width there, look. So it comes out here. So they are claiming something like 100 degrees or whatever. It's nowhere near what you'd get with something like the H1. So we'll turn that on. Right, so look at the width of the H1 there. So we'll point that out. So we'll move that there. We need it on a, on a black section or there. That's better. So can you see these two lines here? So that's the width. Brilliant for hiking. Really, really like that. And I think that's a great feature, even though this does have a little bit of push in the middle. Uh, not so much with this look. Yes, as you pull back, it, it widens. So, so look, if you compare that, it's not bad. It's not bad. This is better for width, but this is slightly more concentrated. So you need to bear that in mind. And another thing I want to point out is I hop on and on and on and on about TIR. TIR is the best. TIR is the best. I just find for a headlamp, it is better for up close. And the reason is, is you get less of a distinct beam profile. So if I was to turn on this night call, for example, and bear in mind, I'm really close here, but if I, if I bring it back just a small amount, that's beautiful and diffuse. You've got the, the most light in the middle and then it slowly diffuses out into this beautiful, when I'm working up on things closely, I prefer that. And then obviously at higher levels, it starts to slightly obscure deal, but not enough. Now, the, the problem then you get is if you have something like a smooth reflector, uh, and I will find one. Uh, in fact, we'll just go off this because this is a smooth reflector. So as you can see, it has this reflective bowl. Now, what you're going to get with that is you're going to get the light reflected is going to be focused. So when we turn this on, what you can see is you've got this hot spot. So you see this section here now up close. I think you'll agree that it's starting to obscure detail. Now, if we go to the maximum, it, it, you can hardly see the corner of that T. Look, see how it disappears? I'm over-exaggerating here, but I'm just trying to show you. It's getting in the way. Now, as you bring this back to where your head would be, I mean, I'm only bringing it back to the camera, not even my head. That disappears, and you have this distinct zone. So can you see this here? It's more distinct. Oh, in fact, here's some pictures. I'll, I'll put some pictures up the top. And I'll show you the, the beam down here. If you look at that, you can see there is a distinct line and termination line between the spot and the spill. So the spot is the section in the middle, and then the spill is the section to the side and, and around it. Now, when I first got this, I thought, no, no, I don't like this. A headlamp, especially a small one, one where you're expecting to use it up close, it should be TIR. So you've got this lovely diffuse beam when you're working on wiring or computers or whatever. But I was wrong, and, and I admit that. I'm sorry, you know... I mentioned this on a few of my, the things I message on, and I was a bit annoyed by that, but it, watch, as soon as you come back a substantial amount, this is so wide, the spot isn't piercing and hard. I don't think they're going for maximum throw, but they're, they're wanting the light in a section. So it's very hard to explain. The hot spot is visible, but it's not harsh. And I think because of that, I'm letting them off here. Because when I was walking along, I didn't walk along and say, I hate this, I hate this, this shouldn't be a thrower, this shouldn't be a thrower. After about two days, I forgot it was even a thrower. So I will forgive them on this instance. Normally I would say, if it's really small, it should be a TIR, that's really small and a TIR. This is really small and a TIR. This is really small and a TIR. They're going for that because they want a diffuse beam up close. But I'll forgive them on this because outdoors, I can't see it. It gives you that little bit of punch, but it's wide enough to be of utility. And up close, when I've got this on my head and I was busy with machinery at work and computers, not an issue. Even when I was using it on um, electronics, I would have this um, magnet on a, on, a, on a section due to the mag tail. It didn't cause an issue. So I'll, I'll forgive them in this instance, but I just want to point that out to people who say, well, hang on, you're always saying TIR is the best. Well, it is up close, but in this instance, I'll forgive them because you haven't got this tiny point, this harsh point. It's not enough to obscure. It's wide enough. They've, they've done it quite nicely, actually. I was quite impressed, and I admit I was wrong uh, when I initially thought, oh, this, I'm not going to like this. What were they thinking? So well done, Ace Beam. Okay, I'll, I'll admit I was probably wrong when I first picked this up. Okay, so... What we really need to do is we need to go over the pros and cons and then I'll show you some of the other lights. So, 
pros. Magtail, I've used that really good, nice and strong, although it doesn't have to be too strong because this is very lightweight. I like the clip and it works again because this is so slim and lightweight. It's more than enough and it's reversible, which gives you options. And you can also put this on webbing and things like that. It's very high CRI. I thoroughly enjoyed going for walks with this. I really did. I mean, I mentioned that in, I did a, a video for the channel members only and I did a thoughts video and I think in both of those I mentioned, I really, really liked it just the way it was picking out the reds and the, the beautiful browns and you're not getting that with other things i mean after these pros and cons i'll show you some beam shots and i'll, I'll show you the actual difference um so high cri really really nice uh the it's ipx8 so proper waterproofing which i think a headlamp should be you need to be able to rely on it you've got tint options if you don't want this you can get the 6500 and you get more lumens the nice headband which works i was worried it was just a two pointer but it's more than enough um the only tiny little bit i think this is too tight but then i'd rather have it too tight and too loose and then the whole thing falls to bit you know the whole equation falls to bits because it's irritating to use this isn't so i'll forgive them that to a degree i think it's a nice size and weight and you have the fallback option of just sticking in a normal double a alkaline battery now bear in mind an alkaline battery is a different voltage it's like 1.2 on the nickel metal hydrides or 1.5 on an alkaline this is 3.7 plus so you're not going to get a similar amount of power in an alkaline so therefore you are not going to get the same output but you have that option so you can put a normal alkaline in and get on with your day i like that because there are lights that don't allow that in regards cons um i think to be honest i still think unless you try this you're going to watch this video and go I think he's wrong. No, you need it. If it's up close and it's a small light, I want TIR. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You really need to try it. Try and get it on offer. Um, you know, I was talking to, I think it might have been Electro Buzz, or I forget everyone's name. It might have been Electro Buzz or Big Al or someone like that. And he was saying he got them on Mega Offer on, uh, I think it was Amazon. I, I don't like putting in the affiliate links, but what I'll do is um, if anyone has bought one of these, can you put in, in where you bought it and where you got it cheap? We'll help each other and try and get the cheapest deal on this because I, I really think you've got to try it to appreciate it um uh, the other thing like like i said it's hard to get in and out of this silicon and you can't use it whilst charging but because of that that increases the ipx so that's a give and take isn't it there's a bit of a seesaw effect there so anyway i'll, I'll show you the beam so if we, if we bring up a photograph here right so what have we got here so i went out in the night I went for a hike and I used this target, this, these trees in a clearing. So I tested the Bryanite, the Ace Beam, a Nebo Micro and a Wubin H1. I had held them at the same height, I aimed them at exactly the same target, I did everything, the same length exposure for every single one. It is, you know, I did it, I was as fair as possible. So what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, the Bryanite HL16, not the H16, the HL16, you can see even though it's a TIR, it's not very floody, is it? The, the, the extremities there it is sort of petering out to darkness, which is interesting, especially on the left and the right there, and there's a, and a little bit on the bottom there. But in the middle, it's very bright. Uh, I think you get something like 502, 520 lumens on that one. It's using a slightly different battery, I know, but it's similar size-ish, a little bit fatter. Um, so for a TIR, that's very punchy. In the middle is the Ace Beam H16, which is the light that we are looking at and reviewing. Now straight off, look at the difference in it's not that's not just tint. There's there's a CRI issue going on there. Um, I mean, I, I think I took these at the highest level I could and I merged them in 16 bit and things like that. So uh, that's very representative of what I saw. So there's a bit of color tint going on there on the Bryanite and color change there. But the Ace Beam is picking out those browns and the, and the, the reds and browns of the earth there. I think that is much closer to reality of what it actually looked like and I was there with various different lights. So now it does have a lot more fluid. So look on the far left of the Ace Beam and the far left of the Bryanite. Bear in mind the Bryanite, which is a TIR, should be floodier and wider. I would say the Ace Beam's better. It's picking out much more on the far left. So it's doing it at a higher CRI and it is looking better because it... For me, hiking and things like that, you need a bit of flood. Um, and if you don't get that, this, this, a bit of width, it makes it more difficult to balance and judge things and see where, where the hell you're going. So I think look, it looks nice and just enough flood and they've done a good job.
Moving on to the Nebo Micro, I think that's something like 400 lumens. Very good, light, um, very cheap, very light. Um, it's micro USB, which is a bit rotten, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but the tint isn't that bad. It, in some ways, the tint's slightly better than the Bryanite, um, even though the pulse width is intolerable on mine. I know they fixed that now, I've been told, but the pulse width's poor. And the UI is poor as well. You've got to go through multiple options just to turn the damn thing off. So, and the turbos, the step down on the turbo is something like 30 seconds. It's very rapid. But I think it's done an okay job. It's nearly up on, on par with the ace beam for the side to side flood. Um, so it's not that bad. I'm not going to have a go at it. And it's much cheaper, remember. It's about $20, whereas this one's $40 to $45, the ESP beam H16. And lastly, I checked the Wuben H1. The reason I wanted to do that was because it uses exactly the same battery, a 14500, but it's much wider. Having said that, now bear in mind, I showed you how wide that was, and it's a TIR. Look at the medium distance there, This is which is what this shot, medium to slightly long range. Um, Width-wise, I think... The ace beam is holding in there, no problem. It's very similar to the Wuben. I would argue you probably can't see it there as much, but in reality, uh, the Wuben's sl maybe slightly brighter in the middle, but only slightly, and you're not getting the high CRI, you're not getting the nice tint, so I still think the ace beam is best. So to sum up, Brian Knight is punching the middle, not so good on the width, even though it's a TIR, which you would expect it to be really good at width. The ace beam is excellent all round. And can you see what I mean where, um, you know, I was saying, well, it's a smooth reflector. Do you really want a smooth reflector on a headlamp? To look at that, you wouldn't think that was a smooth reflector. I certainly wouldn't, especially in some of those comparisons. I think it does an exceptionally good job outdoors. If you can get over the fact that up close, you're going to get a visible line between the the spot and the, and the sort of flood and that it doesn't matter, I think you'll really enjoy this light. Nebo Micro does an admirable job. Bear in mind it's very cheap, but Waco UI and Micro USB and the pulse width flickering is irritating on my eyes. And the Wuben does a great job as well. I would, I'd say the Wuben and the Ace Beam are probably the ones I would pick there. I've used the Wuben many times for hiking and it's a nice light. But if I was doing a nature hike or photography, I'd probably take the Ace Beam on the simple fact that it's just a higher CRI. Simple as that. Okay, so let's get rid of that picture. Right, that's gone. So we've gone over everything I can. I'll, I'll show you these lights up close. So this is the one that we're looking at. So up close, that's what it looks like. And in comparison to the H1, here's the H1. You know, very similar setup. Also has a mag base, but looks different, fatter. TIR is different. It's wider, even though on that picture, this does an admirable job. I suppose on that picture, it's slightly unfair in that if I'd moved out and moved out and moved out, you would have seen eventually that that starts dropping off, whereas this is less prone to that because it's wider. So, But I can't take millions of pictures at every single, you know, you've got to think, what, what do I want this headlamp to do? What range am I going for here? But I still like the H1. I think they do a decent job. Um, but price-wise, it's sort of like 70 bucks. I'd rather get this. It's cheaper. I think they're getting carried away with... I love Wuben, but I think they're getting carried away with some of the costs at the moment. Bryanite, um, you've got a lot of utility with this. You've got a battery check here, so it will illuminate green or red to tell you what the battery is doing when you're running. Mag base again. You've got this feature where you can adjust the angle. I have genuinely used that when I've been repairing PCs and things like that. TIR, even though it is a TIR, it's not that sort of it's more punchy in the middle which is quite strange but nice I, I, I still like using this and again to be fair this is using a 16340 slightly different cell and I also checked it against let me have a look the Nebo Micro so very small look there's the Nebo Micro you know half the size it's wider but half the size very light comfortable to wear although I've never had any problems because it's never that tight because it's so light but I know one person on the review for this was saying no I don't like this well, I think you can't take that off if I remember rightly. And you have tilt options there, so you can tilt it down to your feet and things like that. Uh, but the UI becomes a little bit irritating. And the red and green on this is useless. If you've got this on your head and you put the red or the green on, you can't see anything, so I don't know what the point of it is. You've got to like get right close. It's like, uh, you know, they've, they've just added that. Uh, but other than that, very cheap. and It's good for an emergency light, but I'm not... I'm not trying to be negative about it but there's a little Nebo Micro about 20 bucks for that but I still think I would get this and just so for the fullness of the review and to make sure you understand if you would if you want to take this out you've got to undo it try not to drop the battery when you're out and about 
This is the H1 by Woven. And again, I like the Woven. I'm not saying it's useless. It isn't. I like it. And I've been out multiple times with this. And on that one, you can change the angle like that. You see? So you change it like that. It's got little detents. And then also, you can, you can change this angle as well. Look. And there's magnets in here. So in there, there are magnets. So you can actually just stick that on something, which is another piece of utility. So there's a lot to like about the Woburn, but in this instance, um, I still think this is very nice. So we need to give this a mark out of 10, don't we? So bear in mind, pros, it's type C. You can do type C to type C, which is power delivery, brilliant. Mag tail, nice clip, very light, IPX8, 1.5 meter drop rating, very, very high CRI. You don't have to get that, and you can get more lumens if you really, really want. You've got tint options, you've got 5,000K or the 6,500. Very nice headband, I've thought about that, apart from that one tiny niggle of this, where it's getting in and out, but I shouldn't really complain because it keeps it nice and secure. And you have the fallback option of sticking in AA alkaline or a 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride in. So a lot alike. So the only cons is some people are going to complain. It's not a TIR. I get that. I get that. But if you use it, and I did, I have over two weeks. Um, I can, you know, I can dispel those fears. It it, it isn't, isn't because of the size and the way they've done it and the way that the hotspot isn't some tiny little piercing, irritating thing that's obscuring detail. It's made it nice and wide. It doesn't. It's not an issue. You can see it, but it's not an issue in my opinion. Um, and you can't use it whilst charging by virtue of the fact there is no port like some of these other lights you can get. Um, you know, even the night core. Uh, but even on the night core, you've got to undo a section. But um, there is no visible port there. You've got to take the cell out. So you can't use it whilst charging. So I'll, I'll knock, because it's a headlamp and they're saying it's for outdoors and all that, I'll knock a little point off for that. So other than that, I'm going to give this an 8.5. I have to. If the only things I can complain about is, in my mind, I want this to be a TIR. That's not really that's not really justification to knock points off. That's that's almost like a, a prejudice of mine. So I, I've I've wrestled over this and I've thought about this all day as well because I thought I must shoot the end of that review there after all this testing. And I thought am I being prejudiced because I really like a TIR and I thought I'm going to have to be careful here not to be biased. So I'm going to give them yeah eight point five because. For an ace beam, and they're normally very expensive, this isn't, especially if you can get it on a deal. And if you have got a deal, stick it down where we can all get it. You know, Share the good deals so we can help each other here. Um, and I'm only whinging about getting it in and out of here, but that was because I had to do it in the dark, and I was complaining, I was red hot after a hike. Um, and you can't use it whilst charging. So Otherwise, I, I would have given this a 9, because I really like the tint. I'm starting to really get into the high CRI stuff. I really like it. And five-year warranty, you know... I'm filled with a lot of confidence and that other ASBM I've got rock solid doesn't matter what I do it's spot on and this has been the same I've been throwing this in and out of bags extremely impressed with it. so an honest and you know I think justified 8.5 very impressed with it it's love it's so small look at that I mean what's not I, I've, re I've really enjoyed using this and that's the honest truth okay so 8.5 I've done loads of side by sides and comparisons and outdoor shots so let's go and have a look at them now but well done ASBM so I'm off goodbye we